Yeah, I gotta tell you, <laughs> Jimmy. Ah, uh, Timmy, Timmy Patterson. I've got to, uh, I've got to tell you. Last night, and this is not something that I would uh, recommend to the faint of heart, but I went to uh, DC's Country Junction in Lowell. You drank a beer with a deer. Drank a beer. <laughs> drank a beer with a deer. No. Whatever. Hey guys, it's Chris. I got to tell you something. As crazy as things get around here, covering fights and logs. Message boards. That was awesome, dude. Timmy, you're not supposed to be playing commercials during the show. Are you Better s- check your contract and make sure that's okay. Timmy, put your pants back on too, man. <laughs> this is this is this is highly unprofessional. <laughs> but uh, no, Merle Haggard was playing at at a country western bar. Now, country music is not my thing, and Merle Haggard is part of something that is not my thing. But he's a contemporary of Johnny Cash and uh, and Willie Nelson. So I figured I'd go on in there. Best time I've had in months. Did you do your one li- line dance that you know? No. <laughs> the one line dance that Chuck taught us. No, I did not. But uh, I don't know. Merle Haggard. He's about 99 and a half. And uh, he, looked like, he looked like if you cough on him, he'd fall over. But the <laughs> yeah, man still had it. He was still doing, still doing it proud. Loud and proud. Saturday night, Houston, Texas, lightweight action. Juan Manuel Marquez knockout in the six, in the ninth round. Pardon me, over Juan Baby Bull Diaz. Marquez retains his world lightweight championship. Moving on up to 50 and four with one draw, 37 knockouts is Marquez. Diaz moves on down to 34 and two, 17 knockouts. Well, we just got done talking about uh, what happened in this fight, you know, in the last segment. So let's talk about. What's going to happen with Marquez? Where he's going to exactly. go? Exactly. I mean, there's no point talking. I mean, no, no sense riding that baby bull again. It, it, it's it's done. It's done. First of all, what's next for for Diaz? Diaz is uh. Diaz is still a name. He's going to have to stick around the lightweight. I actually think that I was telling you this you earlier. You were saying that. I, I think don't know. He's I don't... a little bit soft at lightweight. I think he actually could move down if he he worked hard enough. His his thing is being the little pudge in the middle. <laughs> and, and just throwing a million punches. I think he loses something if he moves down. I yep. think the one thing he's got is I think a, he'll have more power if he moves down, though, which is kind of, you know. I'm not sure I agree with that. Because the one-punch power, I think. Don't yeah. underestimate getting punched by a fat guy, <laughs> which I can attest to being one. But, I mean, I, and I'm not calling, you know, Juan Diaz fat, but that extra punch in the middle adds a little pop on, yeah. the, on the end of that punch um if you if you strip him down to like manny pacquiao well of course but i mean <laughs> it's not like you get rid of the gut and then you're pacquiao and you're knocking people out all over the place but uh diaz he's gonna have he's gonna stick around lightweight i would think uh i don't know who he's gonna fight uh at lightweight there's there's a handful of guys there they're more probably gonna be more interested in the guys moving up you know like uh edwin valero or uh Guzman or someone like that at caliber that's going to be moving up to lightweight. Yeah, goodbye to Nate Campbell too. He's not yeah. able to make 135 anymore either. So, but I would think some of those guys will be looking for a big fight, and Diaz will be a big fight for him. And uh, with Marquez, you you brought up Pacquiao with his his build. Uh, Pacquiao, he's saying he can't get that fight with Pacquiao. Pacquiao doesn't want anything to do with him. So the guy he calls out is Mayweather. He says he well, wants. He definitely to, went to the top of the line. Didn't he, he goes, I'm no, they're considering me number two pound for yeah. pound. I want to fight the best guys pound for pound and. If um if uh the fight's not there with Pacquiao, Mayweather's the next guy. That's who I want to fight. Who wants to see a Marquez Mayweather match? You know my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see Mayweather come back. I mean, I don't care who Mayweather fights. Yeah, fight Katsidis for all I care. Fight anybody. <laughs> and I love I love Michael Katsidis, but uh, let's... I mean, if he's gonna fight Mayweather, he's gonna have to move up and wait as well. I mean, uh, Mayweather, I could probably meet him at 140, but I don't think he's coming all the way down to 135. No, I think those think days are in the what past. What do you think about the, uh, the winner of Pacquiao and Hatton possibly getting getting, getting one Mar- Mar- Marquez? It's a possibility as well. I mean, I, I, I mean, most people are gonna think that it's gonna be uh, pa- Pacquiao and that one as well, just by pure. Yeah, speed. most people will. So okay. You... Last time, last time Hatton was up against someone you didn't think he could beat was against Floyd. So I mean, and and he, and he still, I mean, he got whooped, but he he fought Floyd. He, he fought stood him, in he... front of Floyd, and and that was part of the problem. That... <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, ass. <laughs> Featherweight action. Chris John, uh, <clears throat> draw. 
against Rocky Juarez. Yeah. All three scorecards called it 114-114. No, I didn't have this a draw. Did you have this a draw? I had... I actually, I thought uh, Rocky Juarez had this one. I, th- I had it the other way. I thought Chris John won it. Uh, it was only by one round. That's the same thing with me. I had it, I had it what, 112, 116. Holy crap. I, there's no just... way in hell I would have wanted to be an actual judge on that fight. I, I just, I see Rocky Juarez. I see the, the combinations he's throwing. He's a, he's a little um, telegraphed with, it, with his punches. But I, I think he was getting through Chris John's defense a little bit more than John was landing on Juarez. I, I thought John landed more punches. I thought Juarez won a lot of the rounds because of his power. He had a little bit more power than what John had at this sure. weight. Uh, I don't know, John. Chris John has, is going to have trouble coming coming from Indonesia. All his fights have been in Indonesia up to this point until this one. Yeah. And he fought Rocky Juarez in his hometown. So that played a little bit of factor as well, I think, True. with the crowd. Every time it looked like it, Juarez landed a punch no matter what, you know, it, the crowd was going nuts. Even See, that's why I thought uh, Rocky Juarez <laughs> won, because I get super excited when everyone yells. <laughs> but uh, it does – It uh, I mean, <laughs> it does add to the demeanor, though. I mean, it adds to what – People think it does add, but I mean, if you know the sport, you're yeah. not. I mean, he, he threw but, a jab. Woo! You're not. But, you're not going to go crazy over every little exchange. But if you're a judge and you can't see the punch because he's on the opposite side of the ring, you kind of sometimes you yes. judge it by what yes. the crowd react, how the crowd, because you think the crowd's seen it better than what you did. You know. Sure. Sounds but, like those WBC appointed judges for every time Julio Cesar Chavez ever put gloves on. It was a close fight, though, and it was one of Juarez's best fights he's ever fought against a guy that's, I mean, a guy that uh, that beat, uh, or he fought, I think it was a draw against Marquez. He. It was I, a while back, but yeah. I think, no, I think he bought, he beat Marquez. So, uh, I mean, he beat the number two pound for pound guy. So, I mean, they're going to end up having to have a rematch, I would think, with this one, and uh, John's going to have to prove himself. Cool fight, though. And, yeah. and that, that really made for... I mean, when you have... A, take a note, boys. When you have strong undercards, it almost doesn't matter if you're main event bombs or not. Oh, well, yeah. Golden Boy needs to take note of things like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on down. Uh, we don't need to talk about those. Um, yeah, let's, let's try and read that name. Saturday <laughs> night in Los Mochis. Uh, Mexico Junior Bantamweight Action, Simpiwi Ngokwe uh, wins a 12-round uh, unanimous decision, 116 to 111, all three times against Francisco Arce. Yeah, if you haven't heard of these guys, they're because they're in the strawweight division, the, the lightest weight class. So uh... this is all Azteca America. Uh, you're gonna see, you're gonna see these guys, and uh, this is the younger brother. Francisco Arce is uh, Jorge Arce's younger brother. So, oh, okay. Um, but he lost. So. Oh, I was looking at the fight underneath. I thought you read this one. Didn't. <laughs> so that was not Strawway. <laughs> I was going to say. That, yeah. That's a junior bantam. That's a junior bantam. Not much bigger, but a little no. bit. Friday night, Newark, New Jersey. Light heavyweight action. Tomas Adamek. TKO victory in the eighth round over Jonathan Banks. He retains his world cruiserweight title. Still only one uh, loss for uh, Thomas Adamek. And now one loss for Jonathan Banks. He lost the O. Is he the first big name to lose his O in 08? Yeah, I, yes. I guess so. Oh, I would say. I and would say. As we said, Adamak's talking about going to heavyweight. We'll have to see what he can do. Uh, great fight again with Adamak. He always has exciting fights. So uh, it was a little dull, I mean, for Adamak standards, but uh, it's it was still a pretty good fight. Yes. And middleweight action, Giovanni Lorenzo, knockout in the second round over Dioniso. Miranda. Yeah, Lorenzo's a, uh, an up and coming fighter, and uh, he looked pretty good in this one with he the second did round it. knockout. Looked a little bit better than what he did in his last fight, so uh, he's built, he's getting working his way up, and uh, I believe that gave him a number one contendership against uh, Arthur Abraham's title. Well, the right hand that that put Miranda down and out, they showed it about seventy five times. <laughs> it was so clean. It was it was a thing of beauty. So let's go ahead and take our third break of the night. We'll be right back with all the fights that are going to get us through the week. Right here on your Thursday night injection of boxing talk, updates and all out arguments. This is your Bolo Punch Boxing Hour. As it's Chris, I got to tell you something. As crazy as things get around here, covering.